Seattle's Mega TBM Bertha was launched in July of 2013, and then promptly got stuck four months later, in December. It's now April, and the machine hasn't moved since. Well, right now, if we, if we don't start tunneling until March of next year, that means the tunnel boring's been stopped for 16 months. And we had an original contract completion date that was November of 2016. We bid the job to finish 11 months earlier in December of 2015. So right now, if this 16 months translated to a delay at the end, we'd be finishing five months later than the original required date of November 2016. But we're already taking steps to mitigate that delay, and we're very confident we're going to be able to bring the completion of the project back to at least that November 2016 original contract completion date. According to the new plan, boring is scheduled to resume in a year, in March of 2015. The new plan involves replacing the TBM's main bearing. All we know at this time is there's some contaminants in the main bearing, which may or may not have resulted to damage to the main bearing, but we've told Hitachi that we want the spare replacement main bearing, which we're required to have under the contract. We want that here on site and installed. The old bearing can be taken out if it's in a condition that it can be refurbished and become the replacement spare main bearing. That's what we'll do with the bearing that's in the machine. The bearing right now is at Hitoshi Dozen's factory in Japan. It's being kept under a very controlled environment. They're gonna ship it here just before we need to install it in the machine so we don't uh, have any issues with storing it out here on the site. Currently, the 54-foot diameter TBM is 60 feet below ground in front of the launch pit where it started. In order to access the TBM, an emergency shaft will have to be installed in front of the machine. Construction of the new shaft has already begun. The shaft will be just behind me here. It's 83 feet in diameter, 120 feet deep. There's 75 piles that make up the ring of the shaft. We'll, uh, once those are in place, we'll excavate the shaft, uh, put a concrete cradle in the bottom, and then we'll move the TBM forward into the shaft, at which point the front end will be disassembled. We'll have uh, lifting uh, equipment similar to the equipment we had when we assembled the TBM at the launch pit. They'll lift the front part out of the, of the machine, out of the ground, up to the surface, rotate it horizontally, and then we'll start the uh, repair of the uh, seals and the main bearing. When that's complete, they'll be lowered back into the shaft, reattached to the front of the machine, and then the shaft will be backfilled. The machine will mine forward through the north wall of the, uh, of the shaft, and then we'll resume tunneling up Alaskan Way to uh, reach Safe Haven 3. The TBM is still in its testing phase until it reaches Safe Haven number 3 when STP takes ownership of the machine. In my mind, the two most challenging parts are constructing the shaft, getting those secant piles right so we've got a continuous wall all the way around. Excavating the shaft uh, presents unique challenges, constructing the concrete cradle in the bottom. The other thing we have to do once the shaft is built, we have to mine the TBM forward about seven rings to get it into the shaft. And as you know, we've had problems advancing the machine so that's going to be a, a very critical uh, operation, getting the machine into the shaft. During the repairs, the massive TBM cutter head will also be brought to the surface. We're going to be taking off portions of the shield above the cutter drive unit and then remove the cutter drive unit and the cutter head as one piece, which is almost 2,000 tons. But what that does is it uh, it saves time for disconnecting the cutter head, lifting the pieces out separately. It saves time for reattaching the cutter head when we're reassembling the machine. And by picking all of that out as one unit and rotating it at the surface, um, it's gonna help to facilitate the repair. We're confident we're gonna find out what caused the damage when, we, when we're doing the repairs or after we complete the repairs. And we're very confident that we're gonna have what you call a tip-top machine to complete the balance of the tunnel drive. We are uh, disappointed, as uh, I'm sure some of the public is, in uh, the delays that are associated with that restart. 
We, we definitely want uh, people to understand that, that we, do under, uh, we do sympathize with them, that uh, these delays are not what people were looking forward to. With that, though, we, we believe that the, it's nice to have a schedule from Seattle Tunnel Partners and some specifics about what they, what they plan on doing. And what we're really envisioning here is still overall to uh, get this tunnel complete, get this old viaduct taken down, and get this program, this whole project and program completed. As of today, the TBM is scheduled to resume boring in March of 2015. The original proposal called for work to be completed by November of 2016, a plan which STP believes is still possible. In Seattle, Washington, Sterling Noreen reporting for Tunnel Talk.